Okay, so I know it's been a few months since I've done an update and I've had several people asking for one. I apologize, schedules have been really busy around here, um, but here's your update. Um, we did pick up a trio of, these guys are long-term captives, so we're really pleased with them, of the red eye Croc Skinks. Normally, I don't keep them in a trio, um, but these guys are doing really well. They've actually, were already producing for um, the previous owners. Um, and we even had one lay an egg as soon as she got to us. So they're a little bit smaller than I like to breed, start breeding them, but apparently once they're at least three to four inches the snout vent length, I guess that they're okay to breed. Um, so this is the only trio that I'll probably be having just because the last time I tried having multiple females, it didn't work out very well, but I, this trio seems to be very comfortable with each other. Um, this is the big male. You can see just he's got a big old head. Um, they're still a little bit nervous. That's why I'm keeping them in, in the tub in the rack system. Um, just because they're not super used to being out and, and watched. Um, again, I will say that all, all my tubs and all the cages are pretty dirty. Today's my cleaning day. I just wanted to get a video done beforehand. So I apologize for dirty tubs. Um, these guys are eating like monsters. We literally fill up this mealworm dish like every other day and it's always empty. Um, I do earthworms for these guys too and they really seem to enjoy the earthworms. Um, but once again, that's the newest trio of red eye croc skinks. So they will be moved out of the rack soon. Um, I don't like keeping the breeding groups in racks because they just don't produce very well in here. I feel like they need um, either the UV light or they just need a, a consistent photo period, something. The last time I had croc skinks in a rack for a whole year and I got no production out of them. Um, so they're going to be moved out of the rack within the next few weeks. But this is just kind of basically a, a basic hospital tank set up and it's a, this is a 32 quart tub. And you can see it's, they can't see very well out of the sides. It's nice and foggy, so they, they're a little bit more comfortable in there. Cork, um, coconut, dirt, and then this is just some fake bamboo plants, which these guys love. A nice big shallow water dish, which clearly they use all the time. Um, yeah, so that's the new trio of red eye croc skinks that we picked up. Hogs are now out of cooling, which is awesome. We've got some big plans for these guys here. Um, I have... A female head albino and she's gonna be paired with the our male anaconda who's also head for albino so. again empty water bowls that's just today's cleaning day and so we're gonna be taking care of all of that after the video um, this is my female conda just came out of shedding we literally just fed her so I'm not gonna keep her tub open very long because she's expecting more food um, but she's gonna be going to our albino anaconda so we're going to produce some supers, some albino, I mean some supers, some anacondas, and some normals, all het for albino. Uh, got another one here, I believe this is the possible het hypo that we're trying to prove out. Um, she was either het albino or het hypo, so we paired her with a, an, a het albino last season and it didn't prove. So this season we got lucky enough, um, we're borrowing a male hypo, it's a breeder loan, and so we're going to try that with her and see if we can prove her out to be head hypo, which would be awesome. I'm so looking forward to having hypos. This girl here is our het snow girl that we picked up. Um, I didn't have a male for her yet, just because the snow isn't big enough to breed. Um, so we got another breeder loan for her as well, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but she's, we purchased her as a het for snow female um, this past, a few months ago. And she's done quite well, just came out of cooling, and very nice size on her. So we're going to give that a shot too, see if she proves. And last but not least... We've got this beauty, who is always hungry. Um, this is the Annery Het Snow, and she's going with our albino Het Snow, same, same boyfriend that she had last year. We're hoping to get a few more than just two babies out of her. But she's the one that produced that beautiful little baby boy snow that we have that we're trying to grow up. So I'll show you the males that we have picked up. Um, this is the hypo that is on Breeder Loan. 
He's just beautiful. I'm in love with the hypos. He's amazing. Um, we have a friend of ours is loaning him to us. And he's already been paired with the possible het hypo and it looks like they got along quite well. So we've got high hopes for that pairing. And this kid we just literally picked up a couple of hours ago. Um, this is the breeder loan. Um, he is the albino het snow from OC Balls. He's a good friend of ours. Um, you can follow them on Facebook. They may even have a Twitter. Um, but this is their albino het snow. Um, just came out of cooling. Just got him this morning. He's already eaten a meal. This kid has an amazing feeding response. I'm in love with him completely. Um, and he's going to go great with that other het snow girl that we have. Hopefully we'll get some snows, some albinos, maybe some anneries. Probably some normals out of the pairing. But exciting stuff. Oh! <laughs> there we go. And this is our albino het snow. This is the one that's going to be going with the anery het snow since we had such a successful pairing last season. Um, we figure we'll just pair up the same male with her again. <laughs> this is just an extra male het snow that we have. Um, since we had access to the albino het snow up above, we're not going to be pairing him this season. Um, we're actually thinking of letting this kid go, so if anybody's interested, we are going to be posting him on, on Facebook as well. Um, he's cooled, ready to breed, um, but we just don't have a need for him at this point. Down here, this is the normal male that you guys have seen before. Um, still no takers yet, so if anybody's uh, wanting just a normal male hognose, um, he is cooled and ready to breed, um, but he's really sweet. He would also make a great pet. Um, so if anybody's interested, again, he'll be on Facebook. We're not going to be breeding him this season. He wants a girlfriend, but I just don't have a use for him. So again, if anybody's interested, um, check us out on Facebook. And I, we're also on Instagram, too. And this is our anaconda head albino boy. I'm not 100% sure. I think that he is actually going to be going to a girl this season also. And everybody's hungry. Or looking for girls. Some of them are still eating. A lot of them are just wanting to be with their girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And this beauty here, this is our male albino conda. This will be his first season being bred, and he's the one going to our anaconda female. So we're really hoping for some super condas out of this pairing. It's going to be really exciting. In other news, we have picked up some youngsters this season. I do have some pretty cool, pretty cool babies. Um, this is actually a purple line anaconda female. And she's got the greatest feeding response. We got her from Brent Bumgardner. Um, she's got a nice little attitude, but a great feeding response, and she's just stunning. Unfortunately, the, the yellow lighting in this room really doesn't do well showing off the colors. Um, she's in blue, too, so I won't mess with her too much. But that's a purple line anaconda. Oops. And then I also have... This is a Het Snow female. She's got a little bit more of an attitude, so I'm not going to open her tub. Um, that's a younger Het Snow. Um, we may or may not keep her. We're not 100% sure yet. Um, if we do let her go, I'd be willing to let her go as a pair with the older male Het Snow that I have. Um, if anybody's interested, just send us a message. This is our conda. You guys have seen her before, but she's much bigger now. Um, this is the female anaconda that we hatched out this last season. And she's growing and just beautiful. Love this girl. Um, I'll give you guys an update on the snow. We haven't been pushing him as hard this season. Um, I suppose we could have and had him ready to breed, but I, it's just something that, again, our schedules have been really busy. We just haven't had the time. Um, but this is the snow boy. He's so cool. I cannot wait for next season to breed him. Very excited about this kid. And another very exciting pickup 
is this one right here. This is going to be the start of a new project. It's, it's something we're kind of getting interested in. Um, this is actually, he's an albino, but if you can see his pattern, he's almost 100% tiger. Um, and he's not a banded because the, the, he's got that reverse stripe down his back, which makes him a tiger more um, kind of pattern. And we're really kind of liking these twin spots and these tiger patterns, and so I think we're going to start focusing on that in the future. Um, this is the start of that project. We're going to be looking for another female tiger probably this season. He's a little small. He probably won't be ready to breed till next season, maybe, depending on how, how good of an eater he is. But this is something that we're really excited about is kind of specializing in maybe some pattern morphs more than more than just the the color morphs that everybody seems to be doing right now. So that's going to be very exciting. Um, we're really looking forward to starting starting on that project. Well, the, those are the exciting hog projects that we've got going on. Um, I also have haven't done much with the Cresteds this season yet, um, but I do have um, one that I'm willing to let go. By the way, I don't know if you guys have seen these all-access bins. I believe they're by Rubbermaid, um, but they are completely awesome. This is the extra small size, which is great for young crested geckos. They're a great size. Um, they have a door in the front, which is really, really cool. And then also, obviously, the door on to, uh, or the lid on top. Um, I do modify them because I find that there's just not enough ventilation. I do cut a hole in the side and just use window screening just to give a little extra ventilation so that it doesn't stay too humid in here. Um, this kit I picked up as a hatchling. I was hoping that it would be female. I actually picked up two, um, and they're both males. So I'm going to be letting this one go. Um, this is a, kind of a yellow buckskin. It's definitely not a citrus yellow, but it has the potential if you do have a nice yellow female. Um, it has nice potential to put off some nice offspring. Um, it's a reverse reverse pinstripe, I believe. It's got the darker shade of the pinning on the back. Um, and again, it's a buckskin, but it's it got a nice yellow, lighter color. It's not just brown. I, w I would say it's more of a yellow. Um, and again, if you've got a nice female to breed it with, you could produce some really nice yellow crested geckos. Um, this one looked like a female for a long time, and then I looked at it last week, and all of a sudden it's a boy. So I um, don't have a need for two of these kids. So if anybody's interested, um, he's not quite big enough to breed yet, I'd say. I haven't, I haven't weighed him, but um, size-wise, he's still a juvenile. But if anybody's interested, let us know. Again, these all-access bins are awesome. Um, you can get them at Target. I got these at Home Depot. Any place that sells Rubbermaid or storage bins, definitely check those out. And since the last time I know I redid some of my um, some of my live planted tanks, I haven't really been happy with them lately, so I switched everything around again. <laughs> so this is the Crested Gecko Viv that I have um, that you guys have seen in the past. I just pretty much took everything out and redid it. He's got the same inhabitant, my nice red male. He's my um, breeder for the females that I and all the crests that I've been producing he's been the father of all of them um, so he's been my cornerstone male I guess you could say um, he just loves sleeping in this corner so I had to put something back in that corner for him because he's been so stubborn he's just like sleeping on the glass back there so I finally put an extra cork for him um, but this is basically just a ficus plant um, I've zip tied the stems together just to kind of make it more like a tree instead of a bush um, and I had to kind of cut it back and make it fit in here. Um, and again, sandblasted grapevine just to give him more areas that he can use in the tank. I'm liking it way better than the last setup that I had, and I think that he is too. So lots of cork hiding places. Um, Pothos is another favorite that I like to use just because it's so hardy. Uh, yeah, so that's the new crested setup that he seems to be liking, especially since I gave him his favorite hiding spot in that corner since he didn't like the other side. Again, dirty glass, dirty windows. I just haven't cleaned anything yet. As soon as I'm done with this video, I will be cleaning. And I redid my tree frog tank. Um, I know I did a little bit of a build viv, which wasn't super successful, unfortunately. Um, 
but I took everything out. I just really didn't like it. And this is a um, fiddle leaf ficus plant, which I hadn't seen before, but I stopped by my local nursery and I saw it. And it's got the best, thickest, strongest leaves. Um, it likes a higher humidity environment, which is perfect for living in a viv. Um, and I, it's, it's just awesome. The frogs are loving it, and I'm really liking this choice here. I did save the other plants that I had in here just in case if it doesn't work out, um, I can put everything back in the way that it was. Um, but it's an indoor house plant, and it likes the lower lighting and higher humidity, which is perfect for a viv. And ficus obviously are non-toxic, so it worked out really well. Um, again, I do keep the pothos in here. It's just a really nice hardy plant. Um, it grows like a weed, so it just gives them all kinds of extra cover. But this is, a, again, a fiddle leaf ficus, which is great for these tree frogs, probably even for crested geckos. I just only got one, so it went to the frogs. And last but not least, I haven't showed this tank very much. I haven't had a whole lot of success with it, um, so I decided to just completely redo it. I took out the background, and I kind of got it set up for maybe some dart frogs someday. It does have a little bit of growing in to do, um, but it's pretty much um, just kind of, I used cork to kind of build up the back and give it all those nice extra levels. This is just um, Spanish moss. I'm gonna replace it with some live stuff, but it was just kind of a filler and it looks nice. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a smaller variation of the pothos. It's a related species um, and other various kind of terrarium plants that I've borrowed from the other tanks. I'm kind of happy with it. It does still have a little bit more to go. I got to put some, probably some leaf litter on the bottom and some other plants in there to kind of give dart frogs better cover. But it's a start and I'm kind of liking how it looks at this point. So there you go. There's our update for this month. We'll try to be better at it now that all the hogs are out of cooling and we're going to have more news to show everyone. Thanks for watching, and again, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter at SoCalHerps.